Hi guys, it's Blackie for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft. Okay, and continuing with the tenders idea on our fire set, we have now gathered our tender. This is birch bark. This is a big wad of cedar bark. And down here in the bottom, I've got a bunch of bull down thistle. Bull thistle down, I should say, sorry. Now, you've got your tender. What should you do with it next? Well, I recommend that you carry it in the bulk form until the time when you're going to actually need it, and then you're going to process it further. Like this cedar bark, it's just fine little hair-like strips, and that's what we want. But there's some bigger hunks in here. We want to get rid of those. We want to process them down a little bit further because the more surface area you have, the better. Now, by leaving it in the raw form, whenever we're, we're possum mentality, we're gathering it as we go along. It hasn't been fully processed, so it's kind of keeping a lot of those volatile oils and things still locked inside of it. But now we've reached the point that I'm here and I want to create my fire. Well, I have brought out my stuff, and now I'm going to start doing this. Grab with my fingers, pinch, thumb, rotate. Grab, fingers, pinch, thumb, rotate. Grab, fingers, pinch, thumb, rotate. Now, if I'm in a very damp environment, I've already got my shelter, I've got my place, I'm out of the weather, so I can sit and do this hunkered over, you know, to keep the minimum amount of oxygen, of a minimum amount of dampness from getting into my bundle. And I'm just going to keep tearing up and this, you're going to lose a pretty good bit of it that's okay you can pick it back up and put it back in you may want to put something down here like a, a your uh, your rag your shemog something like that to catch those because what you're dropping is the best stuff it's the finest but we want to catch it and put it back in we want to just keep processing processing always processing this stuff down until it is as hair fine as we can make when it stops looking like bark and starts looking like a ball of hair, you're definitely there, okay? Because what we're doing is breaking down those fibers. Now all that stuff that was secure inside of it, we're bringing to the surface. And now whenever I hit it with a spark, especially things that are, have volatile oils in it, like birch bark, pine, and etc., I'm squeezing that oil to the surface. So it's there for quick absorption quick ignition. So I'm going to process, process, process this stuff down until I get what I want. Now, this supply right here definitely is going back in. That's right in the middle. That super fine little stuff that just fell out of me doing all that crushing, that dust. That's what I want right there in that middle. Just like that. Now that's small. I'm just doing this for demonstration. If I was doing this for a fire and it was fairly wet conditions, I want this thing to be at minimum the size of a cantaloupe. I want a ball. You know, when it hits ignition, I want to conserve my resources so that whenever I ignite it, I want it to have fuel, I want it to have all of it, and I don't want to have to keep going back over this. If I'm stingy on this part, then my fire may fail because I need this, my tender, needs to ignite, it needs to catch, and it needs to generate the heat that gets my pencil fine sticks and things like that up to combustion point. So it has to generate enough heat. Now it's easy for it to generate that heat whenever it's in the middle of summer and it's bone dry, you know, like out on the west coast. Hardly anything has a problem burning there. But it does need to be there, that, that big pile. Whenever we're talking, it's dead of winter, it's cold, it's damp, everything's got a moisture content to it. I need to increase the heat, because A, I've got to warm the material I'm trying to catch fire. B, I've got to dry the material I'm trying to catch fire. And C, I've got to push it up to its combustion point. All three of those factors have to occur from this. So this is what I'd use on a bone dry middle of summer day. This would be easy. This is what I'd use in a driving rainstorm at 35 degrees. It cold, it wet, it nasty, and it's been raining for days. Something the size of that bag is what I'd make. Because when it ignites, I want it to go and go and go and keep going. Now, birch bark. Birch bark has a volatile oil in it, just like pine does. 
and therefore it's almost, you know, actually instead of volatile, we just should say it's an accelerant because once it ignites, it will create and burn from that like a wick. So, you can scrape with your knife a flat sheet and form a little like small bird's nest as it were. A lot of the barks and things like that, that's actually a good way to do it. Just lay it out flat and take your knife and start scraping. And have a catch, you know, either a, a, a big broad leaf of something else or, or something that you can catch and put it on. I don't recommend putting it on the bandana because I want to ignite it on the final product. So I want a big, you know, a big chip of wood, a big hunk of bark, something like that. I can, as I'm processing it, I can shift it over and put it onto that so that when I ignite it, it can sit there, it can be a nice little mound. But it will catch and burn, you know, by itself basically. Very little processing necessary, just taking your thumb and rolling it, you know. Roll it between your hands like this. Crush it, bring up that volatile oil, you know. Hold it over your catch and do like that. And then you got all those fine things because what we're doing is we're creating even more surface area. A greater chance for a spark to catch because when that spark hits it, if it hits a flat surface, it wants to bounce off of it. But if it hits a, a jumbled surface like this, it can land, let soft land, so to speak, and then it's connecting it. I've seen several times where uh, students and people will be using a ferro rod and, or flint and steel, and man, they are throwing some sparks. You ought to see it. And they're hitting and bouncing off because their, their target is this big flat slab of something that isn't catching it. It's bouncing. That's the reason the old timers called it catching a spark. It should catch, like a catcher's mitt, a spark. And so when you build your bird's nest, Think of that, form it into a bird's nest, or think of it like a baseball glove so that it's going to catch and hold the spark and thus ignite easier, okay? Let me show you how these ignite. Stay with me, be right back. Here I've got my tender ball, and I'm forming it into a bird nest, like that. Now, another great use for these open L knives, make good strikers. Okay, and you can do it with the knife closed. I'm going to take and put my ferrite in at the base, 6 o'clock position, to my bird nest. I'm going to push against my back backing. Now, of course, I've already technically got all my fire laid and ready over here, just waiting on this ignition source. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape straight down and in, into the bundle, like that. See that burn like that? It will, I can fire it by stiff arming like this, then pulling the rod. See how that went over and danced? So I'm going to put base there, put a solid bite into it, and then pull. Just that simple. And there it goes. Now, roll it so the flames come up from the bottom to the top and get it going like that. And thus we got our fire going. Now, this was large enough like it should be. I can now pick it up and transfer it directly over there. If the conditions are perfect, I would have it on the side. Now see how that's starting to go out because it's starved. If I roll it over, That little bit of dampness in the air right now. Right now we're about 85% humidity. You see what happened right there. I wasn't planning on that, but you see what happened. Perfectly good tender. Everything's processed. I did everything right. And yet you saw it flame and then go out. Due to the pure moisture in the air, put that out. Because it wasn't enough of it. Now, I'm taking, open these fibers up just a little bit more. I made two compact bird nests. Right there, and we're going to hit it again. Putting it in, 
anchor your striker and there and I'll rotate it up so the flame can move through it and there we go that is bone dry now you see how that birch caught it's going to burn nice and bright because it has that volatile so that smoke coming off of it is black So quick, so easy. The processing of the timber, uh, tender is the big secret to doing the good fire lay. Having enough tinder and having enough stuff to make it happen. Okay. Stay with me. Be right back. As I've just showed, <coughs> you can do everything right and Murphy's Law can still step in. So you got to be prepared for that. You don't want to use up your resources when you don't have to. Make all your preparations ahead of time so that when I strike this, this is the last step in the fire process, not the first. I need it to be the last step so when it ignites and I've got the flame and I've got it going, I can turn immediately and put it directly into my fire lay and get my process started. Now, where I see many people fail is they skimp on this step. When they're using, we're going to get pretty soon here into flint and steel and char cloth and etc. I'm going to go into those as well. When you get into it, you're a little too stingy with your resource. The more damp it is, the bigger I need. The colder it is, the bigger I need. The more desperately I need a fire, the bigger I need of everything. I don't want to start a little bitty thing this big like I'm heating up a canteen cup. I want to fire when it's very bad conditions. And so I don't want to have to start over two or three times. Focus on what you're doing. Process it. Shred it. Twist it. Grind it up. Make it like you're trying to make it disappear. You know, shred it up as fine as you can get it. And then take that dust that's created. When you Form your bird nest, put it right in the middle. Take your fire rod, put it down there, get it all centered up, yank the fire rod away so the fire is the sparks are directly directed directly into the middle of my tinder bundle and they ignite my bird's nest. I want to spread it as fast as possible. Be prepared for, like you just saw, humidity or atmospheric conditions to make it go out. Be prepared. You know. Utilize your resources. Focus on what you're doing. It's not voodoo. It's merely time, patience, technique. Okay? Hope you enjoyed this, guys. We'll be back with another fire video pretty soon. I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.